What's going on, everyone? Aaron Nagler here, Cheese Head TV, coming to you live after the news breaks that the Packers are signing Devin Funches, a free agent wide receiver who spent last year on the Indianapolis Colts roster, uh, more to the point uh, on the injured reserve of the Indianapolis Colts after week one, breaking his collarbone. Um, only played in that game for the Colts. They did designate him to return uh, later in the year, but they never brought him back. Now he is set to be a Green Bay Packer. There's no word yet on the financials. Don't know the contract. I got to assume it was pretty cheap, um, especially in comparison to the $12 million guarantee that was handed to Robbie Anderson earlier this afternoon. Rashard Perryman uh, signing with the Jets just a little bit before I went live here. So the wide receivers are suddenly off the board. The Packers have landed on Devin Funches. He's a big guy, much like uh, Gutekunst has liked throughout the years. Uh, the Packers have pretty much gone that way at wide receiver since Ron Wolf resurrected the franchise back in the early 90s. They like their big wide receivers that can work uh, in conditions when the weather gets cold, get some yak going. My issue with Funchess as a player is that he's pretty slow, doesn't get tons of separation, and he's got problems with, with drops, which is kind of similar to a lot of the guys the Packers have had in the last couple of years. So Goody developing a bit of a type here. Now, obviously, he's a younger, cheaper version than what they've just jettisoned with Jimmy Graham. Graham, obviously, a tight end. Funchess is a wide receiver. Uh, but big, slow, can't separate. Pretty similar in that regard. Uh, now, I say all that, this doesn't change anything for the draft. Uh, this is about keeping their options open, filling out the depth chart, if you will, bringing in competition. It allows them to not have to reach for a particular position at 30 and or anywhere else in the draft. It certainly doesn't take a position of need off the board whatsoever. Hello to everybody in the chat today. Uh, starting us off with Funches is a bum. All players have value. And I'm very interested to see what his contract is. The Real DK, thanks so much for the super chat. We don't really have a backup QB. Bears have three. Should we be concerned? <laughs> Backers have a backup QB. Tim Boyle laser show. Come on now. Basically a GMO replacement. Kevin, somewhat. Um, big guy. You know, bigger than GMO, that's for sure. Can run a little bit better than GMO. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I would tend to think that that would be the uh, – Maybe not the idea behind it, but uh, thinking being bringing in another big wide receiver that can compete. Don't forget they're going to get Equiminius St. Brown back. He's similar uh, in that regard. Um, those guys will all, Kumaro's back. Those guys will all go to camp and compete. And I suspect that one or more of them may not make the cut. That's why this isn't huge news. It's not a huge signing, uh, but we'll see what the numbers are. Upgrade over Geronimo? Possibly. Uh, his athletic upside is better, that's for sure. But um, I'm not ready, ready to sit here and tell you that it's absolutely 100% an upgrade. Uh, not a blockbuster signing, but he has shown he can play. I, I'd agree with that. Um, yes, he has been disappointing and underwhelming throughout much of his career, given the expectations when he was drafted. Um, you know, he had, let's say, his best years because, you know, his output has been limited, but. He did his best work with Cam in, in Carolina. Um, and I do think that he's someone you're going to bring into camp. He's a professional. He's done it, gone in day in, day out. He knows what's expected. Um, like I said, it's a depth signing. Let him compete. If he sticks, great. And if he doesn't, you move on. Can we get a weekly Monday drunk cheese? Uh, I don't know about all that, Dustin. Maybe a monthly. I was, uh, I was moving slow this morning. Say the least. Cash Lazard greater than Funches. I very much agree. Um, I don't think there's any question. I don't think this is a. Uh, the idea is they bring him in and insert him at wide receiver two. Uh, I do think that would be Lazard's job, but it's somebody you can rotate and compete with. Does this signing increase chance of trading number thirty in the draft? No. Signing does absolutely nothing for the draft other than keep their options open. That is it. Solid pickup. Jedi, I think that's a fair assessment. It's not overwhelming, but it's understandable. You know, they want to go in with 
uh, bodies to compete. They want to go in with a receiving core that's at least a little bit more talented than what they gave uh, Rodgers and company last year. I think this helps move the ball forward a little bit in that regard, but they're certainly not done yet. The draft is upcoming, and it is very deep with wide receiver talent. Uh, does this change the draft by at least them trying to get a speedy wide receiver rather than a big one? Not necessarily. I mean, if Gutekunst has done nothing else, it's uh, continue on the path set by Thompson, Wolf, etc., of big wide receivers in Green Bay. It's what they've always gone with. I mean, there have been the outliers. There have been the exceptions on occasion, like Randall Cobb. But for the most part, they have a type, and he certainly fits it. Le Houdini, thanks so much for the super chat. Killed me that my fave defensive tackle signed with the Vikes. I hear you. I mean, I really wanted Pierce as well, but there was no way on God's green earth the Packers were going to pay that kind of money. There's just they're not going to do it, especially when they got Kenny Clark coming up this offseason to pay. Gabriel still a possibility. I doubt it. I'd say an outside one, but maybe if he sits out there for a while and doesn't find a deal that he likes. But again, going back to type. Just doesn't seem like that's the kind of move, the kind of body, the kind of player that they're going to bring in. I thought maybe they might because of his familiarity with Lafleur's system. Um, I think he can still be productive in in that system, especially with Aaron Rodgers pulling the trigger. But for now, it looks like they have other ideas. Thoughts on Equiminius St. Brown could do next year and expectations of him being a decent piece for the core. Well, I think, Matt, I think that's part of it. The idea of you, know, you sign Funchess, but you know you have EQ coming back. I, I've said several times here, you can't count on EQ. You can't count on a guy coming back from a severe ankle injury like he had, that high ankle sprain, which was obviously a lot more severe than his people were letting on. There's a reason Goody kind of shut him down for the year and didn't even give him the opportunity to come back. Um, you, you never know what you're going to get, and you certainly can't count on him. But you definitely bring him in, you let him compete, and you see what you've got a year after his injury. And look, we all saw his rookie year. He's got promise. He's got potential. He certainly showed that he belongs in the NFL. I don't think there's any question there. Um, I think it'll, a lot of that will come down to how many wide receivers they draft and just how talented they are. Because look, if they draft guys high in the draft, um, it's going to be all out competition. And there's un it's undoubted that the guys who are premium draft picks will get you know a little more leeway in any kind of competition. So yeah, I think you bring him in, you let him compete. EQ certainly got upside and I wouldn't count him out just yet. Uh, what's up with this front office? If you look at Tay compared to all the other receivers, it's the height and twitch. So why keep going big? It's what they like. It's what they've always liked. Uh, they, they, they like the, the size, uh, the strength aspect of it, working over the middle, that's what they've always been about. I mean, it, like I said, it's been rooted in them since Ron Wolf came in the early 90s. And uh, there are exceptions from time to time. For the most part, that is their type. Do you think we will take a wide receiver at 30 if Mims is still available? Yeah, I think that's a definite possibility. Um, I'm not going to say it's one, you know, they're definitely going to do this or they're not going to do that because we all know that's a fool's errand when you're talking about the draft. But certainly if they get to that point in the draft at 30 where he is Mims is far and away their best rated player, they will absolutely take him. There's no question. Uh, uh, Funches had the biggest drop rate in 2018 right ahead of Laquan Treadwell. Uh, I know. I just said on Twitter, uh, <laughs> Goody certainly has a type. Big guys who can't separate, who struggle with drops. He doesn't get, you know, he's not careful. He's going to develop a reputation. I like Devin. He's a good number two, and he has some good years in Carolina. I don't think he's a number two in Green Bay. I think he's there to compete, and we'll see in what capacity. Most likely, obviously, you're going to play him outside on the perimeter. Uh, but Lafleur did go out of his way last year to talk about how, you know, all the guys are going to learn all the spots and they're going to play all over. So I do think you'll see him in con condensed formations. You will see him inside sometimes. And look, the other aspect that probably makes him attractive to the Packers is his blocking ability, which he can do. You've seen him do it. He, he does it with relish. He's out there. He's going to punish defensive backs, et cetera. You got to do that. You got to do that in this system. You know, those big runs only happen if those wide receivers are blocking, and he certainly will help them in that regard if he does stick. 
Uh, thanks for the super chat. I think the Cryptic Packers players tweets were them not seeing any moves made. Mm, not so sure I agree with you or police work there, but it's possible. Sean, thanks for the super chat. Bears suck. Bears suck. They really, really suck. Now there is a super chat. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, what can we get for trading back from 30? Extra second and a fourth? A third, maybe? Uh, second and a fourth, probably. What's the situation look like at tight end? Will they add someone before the draft? I doubt it. Uh, they just brought back Big Dog. They made the Mercedes Lewis signing official earlier this afternoon. I would think it most likely would be Sternberger, Big Dog, and Tanya. Now, maybe they draft someone, but uh, I'd be very surprised if they spent free agency dollars outside of the Big Dog signing. Any shot at Trent Williams? No. Uh, drops were in 2018 for Funches. Yes, he said that. Sorry, did I not say that out loud? I read it. Yes, uh, he led the league in drop rate in 2018. Last year, he played in one game for the Colts against the Chargers where he broke his collarbone and then was out for the rest of the remainder of the year. Uh, hype, no, uh, there are no numbers yet on the contract. No no idea if it's a multi-year deal, if it's a one-year deal, what the uh, if there is a bonus, what his salary is. Nothing's out yet that I've seen. It may have come out while I went live, but I haven't seen anything yet. Hold on a second. Take a look. Yeah, I don't see anything yet. Uh, uh, I know we weren't going to do what we did in free agency last year, but what do you rate our free agent signing so far? Isaiah, I mean, he's working. Gutekunst is working within the constraints of the salary cap, and he knows he has a bunch of signings that he's got to get done. Now, maybe he can create some room by cutting Elaine Taylor or extending David Bakhtiari to bring his cap hit down, uh, but the big kind of whale, elephant, whatever big creature you want to talk about sitting out there is Kenny Clark's contract. And given that they're roughly 13 before this signing uh, with 13 million worth of cap space, they have to be judicious and they're not going to be going and spending big money on a wide receiver or a tight end. Um, I, I told you guys repeatedly leading up to free agency that they would wait out the early part and they would pick over the second wave. And that's exactly what this Funchess signing is. Um, so I would rate it as expected. Uh, obviously it doesn't blow you away, but championships aren't won in March. You know, uh, he's building his team, he's building his roster. And uh, I think it's very clear that they are all in on the 2020 draft. AMH, thanks for the super chat. Who besides the Niners are the biggest threat in the NFC? NFC I'm thinking Cardinals. Um, yeah, I think the Cardinals got legit scary with that trade. Um, I think you give Murray those weapons, he's going to cook. Um, and I think they've got enough talent on defense to be scary. Uh, you know, I think Seattle will be there because they always are. And they make good moves. And, you know, I don't, you know, the Cowboys have lost some talent on D, but they could still be formidable. You know, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. And we still have the draft to go. All right, guys, I'm going to take one or two more and then I'm going to have to jump. Don't love or hate the signing, but hope he'll learn from 17 and do well. Go Pack. That's that's a fine way to look at it. I mean, I think it's uh, it's it's added depth for most likely not a lot of money, which makes a ton of sense. Dan, thanks for the super chat. I will ugly cry if we don't bring back Swervin Irvin. Any running back in the draft that fits his type that you've seen? None that leaps to mind. I'm going to try and get Matt Miller on to talk uh, draft this week, and we'll go over that. Um, but, yeah, I, I loved – Irvin, and I'm a bit surprised that they haven't brought him back yet, but there's a lot of offseason left, so I, I hope he's back in the green and gold, definitely. Uh, two years ago, they tore down the house. Last year, they built the house. This year, they furnished the house. I like it, Tyler. I like it a lot. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to jump. Please hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. Cheesehead TV, we're devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. And hey, tonight, a little in an hour or so, I'm taking on another Patreon for my Patreon Madden challenge. Happens every week. If you'd like to challenge me to a game of Madden, I haven't lost yet. Could you be the first? To take me down. All we ask is $5 a month to become a patron. You get exclusive access to my podcast. You can take me on in Madden. And you get exclusive early access to the Cheesehead TV draft guide, which is available for pre-order at cheeseheadtv.com. So please. Hit like, hit subscribe, join Patreon, take me on Madden. 
It's all going down. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good night.